Hello and welcome to Pearls of Parmadice. My name is Courtney and I'm coming to you from Parma, Ohio, where I live with my husband and all of our yarn. Today is a dreary gray day in Parmadice. It is February 2nd and it is 10 a.m. So welcome! Thanks for joining me this morning or afternoon or evening or whatever it is where you are for some knitting chat. Uh, grab something to drink or something to work on or whatever you want to do, laundry, whatever, <laughs> while you spend some time with me today. So welcome! If you're new here, you can find me over on Instagram where theoretically I would be more active. Um, it's a goal of mine, but I have not done a good job of that. <laughs> you can find me over on Instagram and on Ravelry as Pearls of Parmadice. That's all linked down below, as well as our Ravelry group for this podcast. Um, my podcast email is down there uh, and my Pokemon Go friend code. So you can find me in all of those places as well as here on YouTube. How have you all been? How was your January? My January was fine. I would say it was a fine month. It was not exciting. It was not amazing. It was not bad. It was just, it was fine. <laughs> it was fine. But I'm excited for February. Um, yeah, I don't know why. I was really excited for February this year. There's no particular reason. But here we are in February. Um... Yeah, let's just get into it. I am all over the place today. I usually film earlier. I don't know what has happened to today. I don't know where it went. Um, the weather here has been super up and down. I do have a slight headache, so I, I'm just, I'm all over the place. We'll just see where this goes. Uh, I don't want to forget to mention we are already one month in. How that happened, I don't know. We are already one month in to our year-long make-along, which if you don't know is the Giant Mini Mal uh, 2024. So you can um, enter over in the Ravelry group. In the finished objects thread, I will be drawing for prizes, I think quarterly, small things like patterns, maybe a single skein of yarn, something like that. And then I'm hoping to offer a larger prize package at the end of the year. So, and if you are a bag maker, um, indie dyer, progress keeper, maker, pattern designer, and you would like to donate something to the make along as prize, I would love that. Just reach out to me, let me know. And if Ravelry is not accessible to you, please email me your finished object photos. I would love to see those and I will get you entered for prizes because Ravelry's inaccessibility should not stop anybody from being able to participate and win. So anyway, if you can, you can do that. Um, giant mini mail really fast. I don't want to talk about this every single episode in length, but mini skeins, I'll talk about it more when I show you what, um, the two projects I've been working on for it. Obviously I'm not entering for prizes, but the chatter thread over on Ravelry has been super active. Lots of great ideas for how to use up your mini skeins and scraps. You guys, you're coming up with ideas I never would have thought of. Somebody shared a reading snake the other day, and I thought that was just the coolest idea. So they're tracking their reading this year by... I think if I remember right, I may be getting this a little bit wrong. They have a free pattern um, that they found for a stuffed snake and they are striping in minis that correlate with the books that they've read that year. Isn't that fun? I like that idea. That's so much fun. I might steal that. I haven't decided yet. If not for this year, probably next year. Um, but I know a lot of people said that they would participate if they were given ideas. So head over Check out the chatter thread. Check out the hashtag over on Instagram. Um, if you do use the hashtag, I would super appreciate it just to let people know about the Mal. Um, let me know what you're working on. I love seeing all of your progress. I've seen a lot of uh, emotional support chickens floating around the uh, knitting community. Those 
a lot of them are scrappy and totally you can enter your emotional support chicken. So do it. Uh, basically the goal is to just use up our mini skeins, our scraps, things like that. So any mini skein or leftover, um, well, a project that takes either a mini or a leftover, the leftover needs to be under 50 grams when you start putting it in the project. Um, that counts. So socks with a mini skein, that's cool. Um, yeah, lots of things. And there are a couple other like little things like Whips are welcome as long as they were 75% or less completed prior to January 1st of this year. This is really all over the place, but it's it's fine. We're just going with it today. Anyways, the giant mini mal, come check it out. I've been talking for six minutes of pretty much nonsense. This is not why you are here. You are not here to listen to my musings and my ramblings. You're here for the nits, right? So let's get to it. So first of all, I have three finished objects today and um, yeah, yeah, we'll just get in. So what am I wearing? I'm wearing my first finished object, which was my first thing that I made in conjunction with my, with the giant mini Mal. And it is my, not going to fit in the frame, but we're going to do our best. It is my What the Crux by Cozy Up Knits. So it's this giant asymmetrical shawl. And I knit this for their make along, which I think runs up through the end of March. So if you're interested, you can still join um, their make along. There's still plenty of time. You just make one of their patterns. I don't think you even have to finish. It's just a chatter thread. So just go cast on one of their patterns and you're good. I do think it needed to be a new cast on for 2024. But anyways, I loved this. I absolutely loved making this. It was so much fun. Um, I didn't, I had had this in my queue for years. And to be honest, I wasn't sure that the yarns that I had chosen were going to work together well. I wasn't sure I was going to enjoy knitting this either. And I wasn't quite sure if I was going to enjoy wearing it. I love it. A hundred percent. I loved knitting this. It was very potato chippy. I just couldn't wait to get to the next section, to get to the next color, to get to the next thing. It was excellent. The yarn is fabulous. So let me run through what I used. The blue main color is from Chicken, Chicken Coop Dye Works on her talons base, which is 100% Polworth, in the colorway dungarees. I loved this. I had never worked with Polworth before, and I love it. It blocked out beautifully. It's not too, it's not, it's not scratchy. It's not rustic. It's not quite as soft as a merino, but it's really nice. And I think it just took the dye beautifully. I don't know. I really liked it. I will be seeking out Polworth in the future. And then I used mini skeins from Molly Klein Design, who her yarn line is Sweet Tea Yarns, I'm pretty sure. And these were all from a Schitt's Creek inspired mini skein set. And I did have to leave one out because it only called for five minis and it was a set of six which is totally fine because the sixth mini wasn't really going to work. So with this, which is totally fine. So this is Rosebud Motel. You, this like green and brown one, which I think was my favorite, um, is You Get Murdered First. The black and white is Ew David. The green and it's hard to see the green and purple and white one is Herbert Langer Wines. And then this pretty brown and gray is Rose Apothecary. Yes. Okay, so, but wait, that's not all. I think I had talked in my last episode that I knew I was not going to make it, that I knew I was going to run out of yarn. I might have already run out. I remember talking about this, and I don't think I had landed on what I was going to use. 
So I went diving in my scraps. I think I had pulled this out. I don't know. I might, I might be already telling you things you know. I don't know. But I had found this blue that was a little tiny scrap left over from, I think, a Haunted Mansion um, Halloween countdown from Fangirl Fibers that I had used up most of it and had just a tiny nugget left. Um, but it, like, you can't really even, you can kind of tell on camera a little bit, but you cannot tell in person. So this is all of that. And then I ran out of yarn again. <laughs> I had exactly enough to knit this section, this last little bit of the blue, which is fine. I really needed it for that. But you were supposed to bind off in your main color. And I didn't magically have another blue that was magically going to work. But that's okay because I did magically have, oh, and none of my mini skeins. I didn't have enough of any of my mini skeins left to bind off, at least according to what it said it would use in the pattern. I don't think it used as much as the pattern said it would for the bind off, but I didn't want to chance it. So that black and white U David, I had a very similar colorway left over from a previous advent from Hannah Made It, uh, who doesn't die anymore. We have had many discussions about that. Um, she doesn't die anymore. And it was from the shawl that I knit last year for Cozy Up's Mystery Knit Along. They did a, which if you're looking for a pattern, that's a great one. It is, I want to say the Mini Me shawl or something like that. If you look it up, something like that. So it was my main color in that. And it looks very similar. This is from Hannah Made It's Never Ending Story Advent. And it was the main skein. And I don't remember what it was called, but you cannot even tell that it's not part of the original set here. So anyways, I got, I used another, an extra whole scrap that I wasn't planning to use and a tiny bit of a leftover. I have a lot of that leftover still. So tiny bit of it though got, went into this. So that's really fun. Anyways, if you are looking for a pattern to use up some of your minis, I would highly recommend this. You could totally disregard um, the color sequences too of the minis and just use scraps. That would It'd be really fun, I think, if you did a neutral main color and then a bunch of wild scraps um, in place of the minis and just, I think that would be really fun. I'm not going to do that just because I have a lot of other patterns that I want in it, but you totally could. So anyways, that is that. I'm really liking wearing this. I wore it, I've worn it once so far. Um, I wore it to work a couple weeks ago, right after I finished it. And I got a lot of compliments on it. And I really, really love it. This, oh, well, mm, no, I'm going to go over that later. We'll talk about that later. But anyways, so one of the things I'm doing for January, at least, what I did for January, what is bringing me joy right now in my making. <laughs> and I don't know that I will always do this. I don't know how long this will continue. I don't know how long this will bring me joy. Um, but as long as it does, I'm focusing on a few select projects each month. <laughs> Just dropped stuff. It's fine. Uh, I'm focusing on a few select projects, e projects each month. And if I can finish those projects within that month and there's still time in the month left over, um, I have like a backup project that I'm calling my bonus project if I can unlock it then I get to start it. So this was my first priority project. And one of my, um, I don't want to say stipulations. That's not, one of my projects that I, one of my goals is to use minis. I would like to use 104, 124 mini skeins this year in 2024. So one of my, um, in order to reach that goal, Words are hard. In order to reach that goal, one of my projects each month needs to be a project that uses mini skeins or scraps, preferably mini skeins, because that's really what my goal is. So this was my mini skein project, and it 
I think covered, I would really like to knit more shawls too. So it was nice that it was a shawl. This was also my new cast on for the month. I'm trying to do a new cast on each month, even if it's just something small so that I don't get bogged down in whips, but also so that I feel like I have a little bit of creative freedom. So that was that. My next finished object that we'll go to are my socks. My streamer socks are done. So I test knit this pattern for Megan of the Fibromancer podcast. I will link her uh, channel down below. So I had the privilege of test knitting these. The pattern is not out yet. I'm not sure when it'll be out, but um, I'll let you know when it is. And the yarn for these is Fangirl Fibers um, from her 2022 Disney Yarn of the Month Club. And this one was inspired by Big Hero 6. And it is called are you satisfied with your care? So I have had the first sock done for, I don't know, six weeks, a month, something like that. It's been done for a long time. And I don't know, I just never got the second one cast on. I had other stuff. I worked on my husband's vest all, it, you know, December got away from me. And then January also got away from me. So this past Sunday... Well, I had cast I had cast this on and knit this all, I think, last week. Um, is that right? I think that's right. Pretty much all last week. So I, um, Sunday, was still finishing up the gusset. And I was like, I have to get these done. So I finished these on Sunday. That was really important to me to get them done. And they are. Um... What do I have to say about these? I did 60 stitches, which is the smallest size in the pattern on these. And I really like that. I have been a 64 stitch sock knitter, I think pretty much since I started making socks. And I've always been afraid to go down on my stitch count because I have kind of a high arch and like my feet are wider. And sometimes I have a lot of trouble getting socks to go over my heel. Um, even like commercial socks, I sometimes have trouble getting them over my heel. So I was afraid that going down to 60 stitches or 56 or whatever would just not create enough space, but these are fine. I don't know if it's, I think sometimes the texture patterns that zoop it in a little bit help, um, help too. But yeah, these have been, these were fine. I haven't, I've tried them on. I haven't worn them, worn them, so I may feel differently once I wear them. But I've been wanting a touch more negative ease in my socks, and I think it's achievable. So those are them. I need to take some finished object pictures of those today, but they are beautiful, and I cannot wait to wear them. And they're perfect for February because they've got these little, like, pinky blips and cream and brown, just like pink velvet hot chocolate or something. White hot chocolate, maybe. I don't know. But I love these. They're so cute. And I am so excited to wear them. And because if you've been around, you know, I'm obsessed with a good theme. Everything has to be themed and perfect. So like, um, because I was using Schitt's Creek minis in this, I of course had to watch <laughs> Schitt's Creek at least one of the days that I was actively working on this. And while I was finishing the second sock, I watched Big Hero 6 because we have to be on theme. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So those are my socks. And one of my other goals, which is like, it's a goal because it's a need. I really need more socks. So I'm hoping that one of my projects each month can be a pair of socks. Other people knit so many socks. I don't know why... It takes me way longer to knit a pair of socks. I don't know why. I think a lot of it is I have to like have a little bit of concentration for the heel and I can't, I can't like keep picking up and putting down in the middle of doing the heel. So I have to find, I don't know, I get stalled right here because I have to find the time to do this portion 
yeah, I don't know. It's a whole thing, but I'm hoping to get more socks in it. So one pair down and I can't wait to start wearing these. Oh, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the episode. Oh, okay. So I might wear these. I was just thinking about it. I don't know if I will or not, but I might be wearing these next Saturday to Wild and Wooly at the Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds. Man, I can't believe I forgot to mention that at the beginning, but that's fine. I'll mention it now. <laughs> so Wild and Wooly is a yarn and fiber fest um, at the Cuyahoga, Ca Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds in Berea, Ohio, which is not far from me at all. I think this will be my fourth or fifth year going. Um, it's always a fun time. I love getting to see people and talk to people and of course, touch all the yarn and smell all the yarn and buy all the yarn. And it's just, it's just lovely. So if you will be there, please come find me. Please say hi. Don't be shy. I will probably be shy. I will probably be awkward, but it's fine. <laughs> just come say hi. I would love to meet you. Um, and no, yeah know who you are. It's so, you know, if you want to say hi, come say hi. Um, and if I'm talking to somebody, please don't be afraid to come up. Like, it's fine. It's probably my husband. Of course, you guys have seen him. So he'll be there. I'm hoping he'll wear his new vest. We'll see. But anyway, yeah, I will be there at least for part of the day. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that little break. Back to our finished objects. Man, we really are all over the place today. And by we, I use the royal we. I don't know why. I don't know. We're all together in this. I feel like you're just here and I'm just chatting to you. Okay. My last finished object will definitely not be fitting in this frame. I am going to try and take a picture or video or something. But I finished. Oh my gosh. It's monstrous. And the thing is, you're not going to be able to get the full effect in the full pattern. This is huge. This is my Tournament of Stitches 2021 knit version. It's a blanket and it is by Marley Bird. And you guys know I love Marley Bird. We're going to talk about her later. Um, it's free pattern on her website. And this was a mystery knit along back in March of 2021. So it only took me almost three years to finish. <laughs> um, this is so staticky. <laughs> there is so much static in my house because it is the middle of winter. I'm just gonna, we're just gonna do this while I talk to you about it. So it is huge. It is absolutely massive. It is bigger than me. I love it. Um, so this is knit out of Knit Picks Brava. I used the 500 gram balls, which we're gonna get to in a second because I did not use all of it, but I have plans. So it's 100% acrylic, which is why it's so staticky, because um, I just blocked this by throwing it in the washer and dryer. So let me, oh my goodness, let me run through my colorways real quick. So this is Peacock. This is Asphalt Heather. This is Soft White, I think, or just white, I don't know. Celestial and Dove Heather. There, you can see all the colors together. It is absolutely ginormous. It is so cozy. So, so cozy. It's big enough that like my husband and I can both like cuddle under this if we're watching a movie on the couch or whatever. Um, yeah, I started when I started in English, I will be honest, I did not enjoy it at all whatsoever, which is why it took me so long to finish. But the longer I knit on it, the more I enjoyed it. And I was truly, I mean, I was very ready for it to be done because, you know, I was excited for it. And we've needed some new blankets around here. <laughs> but I was actually sad to be done with this project because it has been such a nice, cozy, not completely mindless, but not taxing knit. Um, you change colors often enough that I didn't, I didn't really get bored once I got going with it. And it, it ended up huge. I knit this on size US 9 needles. 
Um, a lot of people, Marley has a group, which um, if you're not in it, you should go join over on Facebook. It's called Marley's Minions, and it's all about her patterns, what's going on over there. Um, I've been in there. Oh, my goodness. I think I've been over there about five years now. <laughs> wow. Time flies. So anyway, she does a lot of mystery knit alongs and all kinds of cool stuff. She's always doing cool things. Um but anyways, I posted this and, you know, my finished took a very not great picture of my husband holding it. The lighting was terrible, but it's fine. And a lot of people were like, wow, mine did not turn out that big. So I don't, I don't know if I did something wrong or if I, I think I did use different yarn than what was, what it called for. I think... I don't quite remember why. I don't know what the original yarn was that it did call for. Actually, I do know. I think it was um, Chic Sheep by Marley Bird. May that yarn rest in peace. Um, that was like such an amazing yarn line. I loved, loved, loved it. It was worsted weight, superwash merino, gorgeous colors. I don't know why it was discontinued, but it was so the wrong choice. But anyways, um, in at the time, I just could not, I just couldn't spend that kind of money, uh, the kind of money that it would have cost to use that yarn on a blanket. And I knew I wanted to be able to throw this one in the washer and dryer. I had originally, I wasn't sure how I wanted to use this or where, and um yeah, it just, it needed to be able to be washed and dried with, and I know you can wash and dry super wash merino. I know a lot of people do it in the dryer, but I, I don't know. I just, I can't bring myself to do it. No judgment if you do. I'm just too scared. <laughs> That's a me problem. Um, not a you problem. That's a me problem. But anyways, so and a lot of it was cost too. I remember that being a big factor in making this. So anyways, all that to say, I really like it. And it's a great pattern. And if you look at this and you're like, oh, that looks so cool. No way am I knitting a Gigundo blanket. Um, there's a pillow cover version that she has on there. It's free. So you could totally make a little pillow cover. I low key, I kind of want to make pillow cover pillow covers to match this. But I'm not going to because I have another plan for that yarn. So that's my last finished object. Um, you know what? I'll just tell you what I'm planning to do with this yarn because it is a future plan. But we'll just put it here. We're all over the place. We really are all over the place today. Okay, so I have, let me reach down. I still have all of this yarn left. Okay. Like, let me find, this is just one skein, one of them. I have all of this left, so much. So I weighed it out and everything except the asphalt heather, which was my border, I have at least half of the yarn left. Some of the balls I have more than half. Um, the asphalt heather, just to compare, I definitely have less. But that's okay. So what I'm going to do, I am going to make another one of these blankets. I am just going to change up the color placement a little bit. One of my brothers, um, I have two. One of them is a few years younger than me and the other one is a decade younger. So the one that's a few years younger than me will be turning 30 this year. And um, both of them are over, are like, they're over six feet tall. I am 5'2". <laughs> so fun fact there, I did not get the tall jeans. But anyways, I am going to make this particular brother this same blanket because mine came out so big. Um, I know that it'll be a nice size for him and that should be able to use up the rest of my yarn. So I will need more asphalt heather. I think I'm going to have to order one more ball, but I'll just order a regular 100 gram, 100 grammer. I'm not ordering the 500 um, 
but that should use up the rest of that yarn, which is really exciting. I would really like that yarn out of my out of my house by the end of this year. So his birthday is in November, late November. I am taking February off from that project. I'm not going to start it. I will start it in March. I don't know what day of the week March 1st is. It's a Thursday. Maybe I'll start it on March 1st. I could start it that evening. I'm going to start it March 1st. Yes, let's plan on that. We're going to start that March 1st. And then I've done the math where as long as I get six of those squares done every month, then I should have a full month left over um, to knit the border. The border I did in a weekend and I would not do that again. That was too, it was too much for a weekend. I did not enjoy doing that in that short time frame. I think if I could have done one edge um, each week for four weeks, that would have been fine. But that was a lot of work. I also will be weaving in ends as I go. I did not do that. Um, you know, I kept thinking I was going to, and then I just didn't. And that took like half a day to weave in those, all of those ends. So won't do that on this one. I will weave in as I go. So anyways, that's a future plan. That'll get all that yarn out, which would be so great. All right, let's go to whips. So I finished my three. Um, oh, oh, that was, that was my other. So I, this is the most disjointed episode in the history of Parmadice. Oh my goodness. So I had um, Scrappy Project slash new cast on socks. This is my deep stash whip. So I'm looking at all of my whips that I have on my Ravelry project page. I know that there are a few that haven't ever made it on there. If I locate those, I might throw those in somewhere. But I'm just going based on my Ravelry. So I have two scrappy blankets that are older that those don't count. Those are long-term projects. They're meant to be long-term projects. I'm in no hurry to finish those at all. I just work on them when I work on them, work on them when I have the right scraps. It's it's fine. I'm not worried about that. But starting with this blanket, this is my oldest other whip. And I'm working my way from oldest through to, to newest. So I would really love to walk into 2025 with only things only whips from 2024. Does that make sense? So all of my 2021, 2022, 2023 projects I would really like done. So that was my deep in the archives whip and it's done and it's great and I love it. So my bonus project for January that I got to unlock is a gift knit. Not all of these are going to be gift knits, but I would really like to knit with the seasons a little bit this year and also knit gifts. So that bonus project will most likely fall into one of those two categories. Oh, and which you'll discover soon, some of these projects may actually cover multiple categories, which means I might get to work on more things. Anyway, it's this is just all in my brain and it makes sense in my brain and it probably doesn't make sense when I'm saying it out loud, but hopefully you get it, I don't know. <laughs> all right, so my bonus unlocked project, which every time I think about this, that I'm unlocking it, if you play Disney Dreamlight Valley, we are gonna go on a whole tangent, people. I'm so sorry. <laughs> If you play Disney Dreamlight Valley. So there are these things called night thorns that you have to remove. And um, every day, like one of your little biomes gets these night thorns. And a rift in time has the same kind of thing, but they're called something else and they're not night thorns. But anyways, that's the expansion. Okay. If you know, you know. And anyways, one of these night thorns, when you remove it, all of these coins explode out. And then there's music like timer kind of music and you have to run around and run through them to collect them and if you can collect all of them in the I don't know how long it is because I'm always running around trying to get them 10-15 seconds or whatever then there's then this like chest appears with this little like do 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 kind of thing it doesn't sound anything like that it's better 
<laughs> and then it's like an unlocky sound and I, I don't know. So that's what that's the sound that plays in my brain when you talk about unlocking my bonus project. It's okay. <laughs> this is a weird episode, you guys. I say that every time though, and every time I don't know. It's fine. All right, so this is a sheeple bag from Erin Lane Bags. I've had this for several years. And look how cute it is. Like, look at these guys just breaking through those knit stitches. And then on the other side, they're crafting. This guy's loom knitting. We've got sewing. We've got, I can't even see, beading, jewelry making. This guy's just chilling. That one is, I don't know, cutting something out, scrapbooking maybe, knitting, spinning. Yeah, I love this bag. It's so much fun. So the other thing that I love about this bag, there is, which I'll show you guys once I show you this project, there's a little divider in the middle. So it's perfect for color work um, because you can have one ball, well, two color color work on either side of the divider so that your skeins don't get tangled. Anyways, this is a gift, sort of a gift net. If you've been around, you know, my brother, Jared, who is my youngest brother, the one that's a decade younger, he and I, um, he's always taken my knits. He's always asking me to knit him things. He's super knit worthy. Um, so he went with um, my husband and I and our friend Mac to the Great Lakes Fiber Show in at the Wayne County Fairgrounds. I think it's in Worcester, Ohio. That sounds like, that sounds right. I don't know if that's right or not. But anyway, Wayne County Fair, Fair, Wayne County Fairgrounds. And he was the first one to buy yarn that day. <laughs> he, um, it was his very first yarn show he'd ever gone to. And we all had a blast, but he found the, we were in the, I think it was only like, it might've been like the first or second booth that we looked at. It was Anyways, um, Bewitched Pigments, which they will be at Wild and Wooly. You should check them out. He found two of their skeins of yarn. And he was like, I need these. And I need these to be a cowl with a scarab on it. A scarab is a beetle. And I think it's got some kind of... I know it has some kind of significance in like Egyptian, ancient Egyptian mythology or whatever. Is it mythology? I don't know what you call it. So anyways, it's also featured heavily in the Marvel TV show Moon Knight, which we had all watched back in 2022 together. Mac didn't watch it with us. She watched it with her own family. Um, but anyways, the Scarab features very heavily in that. And he loved that show. So I pulled out my phone, we're at this booth, we're looking for patterns, and I found a pattern, and he's like, if I buy the yarn, will you knit that for me? And I'm like, sure. <sighs> Dear friends, that was Memorial Day weekend, which if you're not in the States, is like the last weekend in May. <laughs> it's been a long time. So I this was the bonus pattern I had chosen for the month. I unlocked it, so I got to start it. I started it on Monday. And this is how far I have gotten. So the colors are stunning. To be honest, I asked him which one he wanted as the background. Oh, and the pattern is the um, Scarab Beetle Cowl by Stephanie Mail. And like I said, the yarn is Bewitched Pigments. The orange color, the background, the main color is autumn glow. And then this teal is scarab, which is why he needed that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he put these colors together and he was the one who decided to do orange as the background. I, if I had been choosing this, I would have flipped the colors, but the contrast is really stunning. And I think it's really beautiful with that, like, intense tealy blue as the main like it pops so well so you can kind of see these are the legs of the beetle 
it's worked bottom up. So I'm not, I am maybe, I don't know, I'm maybe a third of the way through. I'll show you guys my floats because I think the floats on this are just gorgeous. I am knitting this inside out. Um, that's a really lovely color work trick that seems to work well for me. If I knit it inside out, my floats tend to be a little bit looser. And it's just, it's so pretty. I am a little bit nervous about washing and blocking this. Also, it's blowing out. It's not this bright. It's not quite as bright on as it's showing up on the screen. It's more like this. This is more, this is more right. I am a little bit nervous about this though, because the blue is coming off on my hands. It came off a little bit while I was winding it and I was like, oh no. Um, and as I'm knitting it, like my hands are, <laughs> my um, hand that's using the uh, blue, which is my left, is turning blue. So I am a little nervous about washing this. I think if you have any tips to keep colors from running, please, 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 please put them down below. Um, in the past, I have like put some vinegar in the water to help set the color. I always use those um, Tide Color Catcher things when we wash our nets, um, our indie dyed stuff even some of the commercial dyed stuff. So but let me show you the inside of my bag. So here's the divider I was telling you about. And then I've got my ball of autumn glow on one side and my ball of scarab on the other. And I don't know, I have the pattern here. Let me see if, I think there was a picture of the cowl. So my printer is black and white and I don't print things super often. So every time I do, it's like, you know, it doesn't get used as much. So it takes a few pages for things to be dark enough to really see. So I apologize. I don't know. Oh, you can kind of see. First off, my printer kind of gave up halfway through, <laughs> but you can sort of see the pattern. So the wings will be there. I'm just at this, I'm about here maybe. I'm like right here like right in that area. So about a third of the way through. And, oh, okay, there you can sort of see. You'll be able to see really well with my very high contrast. Part of it too is um, there weren't any projects of this on Ravelry. It was just, just the designers, I think. So, um, and it was pretty low contrast. So mine is very high contrast. Um, so it'll be easy to see. But I am absolutely loving this. I It's been a while since I've done color work and every time I do, it's just magic. It's so fun to see um, the colors pop. At the end, I am going to go back in and um, there were two rows of color work at the beginning that I did not do because one of them only has like one stitch of color and the other one has like three stitches of color. And I just did not want to carry floats all the way around the whole cowl for like two stitches. So um, like this has a little stem, I'm gonna put that in and these guys have a little, have a tiny little bit more stem. So I'm just gonna duplicate stitch those in. I didn't, I just didn't think that was worth it. And I didn't think that was a good use of my yarn, you know? So I just didn't do that. I'll go back in and duplicate stitch it later. So that is the Scarab Beetle Cowl. Now, obviously I did not finish that in the month of January. So this is just kind of gonna become a bonus extra project to work on. Not one I have to unlock. Um, but it'll go into my like whip, my whips, but because I started it this year, I feel like working on it, I'll just let myself also because my brother really wants this. So I have one more cast on for January that was an accident. I had brought this to work with me on Monday. Yes. So what happened? Monday. 
if you're if you've been here for a while, you know I have a very strange, like a very different kind of commute. Um, my husband and I have one vehicle, so he drops me off at a cafe near my workplace every morning. I sit there and knit until it's time for me to walk over to work, and then I work all day. So um, two days a week, I work evenings, and on those days, like I work, I don't start until later, and I work through the evening. So I have like several hours to just sit in it while I'm kind of waiting um, at the cafe those days. And one of those days is Monday. So I had, I still had to finish some of a tiny bit of the foot and the toe on that sock. That's right. I finished that Monday. And so I brought the sock and then I brought this because I knew I would get to cast this on. And the night before I had looked for the needles I needed and I had even thought to myself, I feel like in color work, like you usually do the ribbing in one, like if you're doing a color work cowl or something or like any kind of color work project, you usually go up a needle size for the portion of the project that's actually color work. I should have gone back and double checked the pattern because yes, you do. So you need two sizes of needles. And I brought one. I brought one. So I got through the like four or five or whatever rounds of ribbing and that was it. And I had nothing else to knit. And I had a lot of day left um, because I always, I knit on my lunch or dinner break. I knit on my little like 15 minute breaks during the day sometimes. Like it just was not going to be enough. So I looked at what I had and I was like, I, I can't just not have knitting. Like this is not going to work. It's going to be a very long day. So I had some leftovers from my socks and I had the needles from my socks and I had a pattern on my Ravelry queue that I had been wanting to knit for a while. And I thought, oh, I wonder if I could do that. And I could. Why? Because I had random DPNs sitting in my locker at work. Why? I just, I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes you just have random DPNs in your locker. Doesn't everybody? I don't even use DPNs very often, but they came in so handy. Oop. So living in my Christmas sweater bag, which is going to get put away today, I think. I just threw it in here because this was the bag my socks were in. Is the, whoop, hang on. Ah! This is the Twisted Eyelet Bookmark by Blythe Quaylen, I think. And this has been in my queue for forever. It'll lay flat once it blocks, but it's just, there's the back, there's the front. It's just a little bookmark that you can do with a little scrap. So I'm using the rest of my yarn from my socks, which is super blowing out. We had it for a second. And I cast on with these random DPNs that were in my um, locker because the pattern says to cast on with a DPN that's one to two sizes larger than what you intend to knit with. So I'm knitting it on US 1.5 needles and I cast on with US 3s. It's a really simple, it's free pattern over on Ravelry. Uh, you can do it with any weight yarn. You just adjust your, adjust your stitch count. I feel like if you did it with really heavy yarn though, and needle size too, but I feel like if you did it with heavier yarn, um, I don't know, it might be too bulky to be a bookmark, but this is perfect. So I'm just knitting this one for myself. And I'm almost done. I'm going to finish this. I didn't, I kind of had just forgotten about it. I had intended to finish it last night and block it so you guys could actually see it, but that's okay. All of it for next time. And then I'd like to knit another one of these for a friend whose birthday is coming up in a different little bit of yarn. So again, if you're looking for a good project to use up some scraps, um, you can make some friends or family members some little bookmarks. That'd be really fun and um, a great way to use those scraps and minis in an out-of-the-box way. So, okay. Anyway, that was my random cast-on that 
I didn't need to cast on, but it was perfect for what I needed. I just needed a little bit of knitting. And to be honest, I had started it and then I didn't like how it turned out because um, I messed up and I just ripped it out and started over. Um, that was about, this is actually maybe took me 35, 40 minutes, just this little bit. It's a really fast project. So, um, so yeah, if you're looking for a little gift to make, that would be a good one. Even if you started now for Christmas or birthdays throughout the year and knit one for all the readers in your life, you know, that could be a fun little gift that really wouldn't take much time and would use up your leftovers. Okay. February. It's February. February whips. February future plans. All of that jazz. And then we'll do it. There's really not much in life stuff. And then we'll go. So I have one February whip that I've started on. You guys have seen this. And it's living in my little fall woodland creatures bag with their knits. And it's just going to live in here, even though it's not fall. Just that's what we're doing. And this is my giant square scrap blanket by Laura Peters. I believe this is also a free pattern over on Ravelry. And everything I talk about, um, as I'm able at least, I will link down below. And you can kind of see, see how it's like going to form a square. It's super wrinkled. I started this, I think, October 1st or 2nd, maybe. I don't know. I, I started it in October and mostly just worked on it in October. I'm pretty sure I put it away in November. Um, this is, I'm using my 31 days of, 31 residents of the Haunted Mansion Halloween countdown calendar by Fangirl Fibers, which was her 2023 Halloween countdown. And so I'm going to use all 31 minis in this. So I've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I have just this morning added in number 11, which is floating around in my bag somewhere. I've got my little baby goat um, needle stoppers on there that my friend Cassie gave me for Christmas. And I'm on this one. I just, just started it. There, that's the lighting today is kind of strange. But yeah, I am... I have been dying to get back to this project. I have really enjoyed it. And I was so sad when I had to put it away. I just, I had so many other things at that time I had to focus on um, that I had to put this away. I am knitting these on size, I think US 2.5 because <laughs> for some reason, I pulled this out and for some reason I was thinking I was knitting this on a size seven. And then I looked and I was like, um, I'm not knitting these on a size seven. What even are these? Yes, size 2.5. So a three millimeter needle. So it is a nice dense fabric. Like you, you cannot see through it. You can't see through it at all. I love it so much. It's going to be a super cozy lap blanket. And now it's basically like a little bag. It's, it's getting big. Um, the rows are getting long, so each stripe is a little bit skinnier. But pulling this out on Thursday and starting up with it again, which was yesterday. I don't know what day it is. Um, it was just so nice. I love, love, love knitting on this project. Absolutely love it. So that is my scrappy project for February. That's my mini skein project. So I would like to get that done by the end of the month. Um, since I just started mini skein 11, I basically need to knit through a mini almost every day. So I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm going to try my best. And past Courtney, she was so smart. And I thanked past Courtney because 
She labeled all of the mini skeins for this calendar and put them all together in this bag that came with the calendar so that she would have them. Good job, past Courtney. So those minis are all ready to go. I don't have to dig through. She even put them in reverse order so that number 12 is right up here at the top. And we're working down to, this is 31. I just left it in the bag, but day 30 is down here. So smart. She did a good job. So that way I can just reach and grab the next one and wind it up because I'll be winding these almost every day. Hopefully. All right. My next future plan is both my deep stash whip as well as my sock for February. It's living in this Darn Yarn Minnesota bag that hasn't seen the light of day in a really long time because it has had this sock in it. So this was my Christmas Eve cast on for 2022. I did not get a lot of work done on it at all. This is it. <laughs> there are a ton of stitch markers on it. So this is the... The, these are, they will be, the Pink Nightmare Socks by Alex Parker Mooney, who I believe is Left Sock Best Sock. And that is all I have done so far. But you can see why this would be a perfect February project. It's like, like nice Valentine's Day colors. But it's a cabled sock. And I need time to concentrate. So, as I say... <laughs> So it is a cabled sock. It takes some concentration, but they're nice Valentine's Day colors. I think they'll be nice for February. So this was a kit by Fangirl Fibers. It was for a Christmas Eve cast on. So there's this like bare or white mini. And then here is the main color. I don't know what this is called. I don't remember. Um, I probably have the ball band somewhere, but I don't know. So this was a whole like cast on box and the pink nightmare. If you like me grew up watching a Christmas story, you may know, um, when Ralphie comes down the stairs in the pink bunny costume, that's what um, this is inspired by. And the cables are like little bunny ear kind of looking cables inspired by that is, no, that's a piece of the pattern. Looking to see if the ball band is in here. Sometimes it's interesting um, when you just pull out these whips that you haven't looked at in forever. So anyways, that's why... There are all of these stitch markers on here is to keep track of the cables and they are all from the A Christmas Story box, which I'm going to just leave those on. I don't feel the need to change that out. I feel like it's themed. It's fine. So I am going to make that kind of my focus focused project because my other one is pretty mindless, but that'll be my sock and my deep stash whip. And I think that's everything. Um, oh, no, there's one more future plan. I don't have the yarn and I don't have the pattern, but Marley Bird is doing her, I don't know what year we're on, annual game day mystery knit along. And so I looked through my stash. I really didn't have anything that was going to work. Um, she's already put out what kind of yarn you need, all of that. So I asked my husband if as part of my Valentine's Day gift this year or as the whole thing, whatever, if he would just get me the yarn for that project because I'm really trying not to spend a lot of money on yarn this year. I'm really trying to use mostly what I have. Um, I have a little bit set aside for Wild and Wooly next year or next year, next week. Um, but overall, I'm just trying to spend less on yarn this year. We have some other savings goals that we really need to focus on. So he said, sure, we picked out colors together. And I think it's Knit Picks Twill. 
I think it's their Twill line. Um, and that should be arriving soon, any day now. And their Valentine's Day colors. Um, I'm super excited about it. And it's going to be really great. So <sighs> that'll be fun. That's going to be my new cast on of the month. And it'll just, that's just going to be a fun one. And the colors I chose are like a very light pink and then a, oh, mm, now I'm not sure what my second color looks like because I ordered it a week ago. It's either like a purple or I think it's more like a pink, like a darker pink something. And then chocolate brown, like kind of those three sort of colors. So very excited about that. Uh, that'll be next Sunday already for um, here in the U.S., the Super Bowl. That's what it's in conjunction with, kind of. So it's always Super Bowl Sunday. So it's next Sunday. So next weekend is going to be a big weekend. Maybe I'll do a weekend vlog. We'll see. I might. I might not. I don't know. <laughs> you all know how it goes around here. We don't know. We just fly by the seat of our pants, apparently. And then I do have a bonus project, but like I did last month, I'm not going to share that with you unless and until I actually get it unlocked. So we'll see. Can I unlock it? I would need to finish this blanket, those socks, and that game day mystery knit along to unlock the bonus. So we shall see. All right, so that's it for future plans, life stuff. Truthfully, I don't have anything. <laughs> it's been a very, very busy a couple of weeks at work. And then at home, I've just been decompressing um, pretty much when I get home. Not a lot is happening. And that's okay. So nothing really to report there. I am going to sign off now, I think, and get this edited and uploaded for you guys. <sighs> but I hope that in the next couple of weeks, until we meet again, that you find some time to knit or crochet or craft or whatever it is that brings you joy in your little corner of paradise. And I'll be over here knitting away in my little corner of paradise. I'll see you next time, friends. Bye.